Hello. We finished the March Basho, and we all need to learn a lot more about Takeru Fuji. Sato! Hello and welcome to the Dojo here on Mr. J Wag's channel. We are recapping a stunning and dare I say unprecedented March Basho. We're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, first of all, for those of you who are in New York City or will be in the near future, come on out to Second City, New York. This, of course, is a new project I'm working on. My show is called The Best of Second City. Our show is Saturday through Tuesday, but there are a whole bunch of awesome things happening at Second City, so check it out at secondcity.com below. And another bit of sumo news, which is going to affect things in the near future. Former Hakuho stable, the Miyagino stable, has been sort of folded into the Isegahama stable. Uh, I think this will be good for Hakuho as an Oyakata. It'll be good for his stable in the long term. I think it will be bad for sumo in the short term, as now Hakuoho has now joined Isegahama Beya. And that's, that just feels like too much. It feels like too much. Uh, too, too many riches for one stable. And in some sad sumo news, I announced the intai of former Makauchi wrestler Terutsuyoshi. He was, of course, most, most famous for his unorthodox salt throw, where he attempted to empty the basket with every throw. But he did have a fine career. He made it all the way up to Maigashira 3. He finished with one Junyusho and one Kanto show. And, of course, we all remember back in 2020 when Asanoyama and Teretsuyoshi's stablemate, Teruno Fuji, were going down the stretch for who would win the Yusho. Teretsuyoshi faced off against Asanoyama in the last match of the day and leg picked him to a loss. A stunning match, which of course helped his stablemate, Teruno Fuji, win a Basho from Maigashira 17. An unheard of accomplishment. Oh, wait. That's right, for the fourth time in sumo history and the third time in the 2020s, a Maigashira 17 has won the Yusho. And this time it is Makauchi debutante Takeru Fuji. Calling the result of this Basho unprecedented almost feels like I'm underselling this. Okay, first of all, we haven't had someone win their Makauchi debut in 110 years, and Takeru Fuji also won his Judo debut in the last tournament. For only the sixth time in recorded history, he swept all three of the special prizes, which hasn't happened since Kota Mitsuki did it in 2000. As I mentioned in the quick strike, he is tied for the fastest rise from Maizumo to Makauchi with nine, and now that he won in his debut, he holds the record for fastest Yusho after Maizumo with ten, a record I, I frankly don't think is going to be beaten anytime soon. This was so unprecedented, I'm pretty sure I haven't even caught all the unprecedents in this, so if you've got any more, throw it in the comments, I'd love to hear it. He was born in Aomori, and he went to Johoku High with current Makauchi wrestler Roga. That was also the same high school that Terunofuji went to. He then moved on to Nihon University, where he won a bunch of tournaments, but yet was not chosen for Tsukedashi. I'm not exactly sure why that is. But his primary rival was then Nakamura, now Ono Sato, who of course took the Jun Yusho in this tournament. And in college, they went two and two versus each other. Then after graduation, he joined fellow alum Terunofuji Fuji at Isegahama Beya, where he started working his way through the ranks with the quickness. Now you may have noticed I did not mention Takeru Fuji in my predictions for this tournament, frankly because I didn't expect him to do all that much. I was expecting him to get uh, like 9 or 10 wins and like that, like have a steady debut, but nothing like this. He's clearly at the Sanyaku level already, having gone 3 and 1 against our current Sanyaku in this tournament. And I would expect him to be promoted up to the joy after this tournament. Maybe not up to Maigashira 1 like Terunofuji Nofuji did after his Yusho, because there's, there's going to be a lot of people trying to get into Maigashira's 1 through 3. Talk about that in a bit. But I have a list of pros and cons for Takeru Fuji's future, and let's go through them. First of all, he's 25, and that is a great age to be jumping into your Sanyaku level peak, and as I said before, I think he can hang up here with the big boys. He is in Isegahama Beya, which I believe is the strongest stable in sumo right now, especially because they're going to be getting all the Miyagino guys. That's a whole separate thing. I think it is an incredible advantage for a young Rikishi to join a stable that has numerous members of its stable in the paid ranks already. And of course, there are only 70 members of the paid ranks, so they're going to be distributed, sometimes unfairly. But in this tournament alone, Isagahama already was represented by Terra Nofuji, Midori Fuji, Atami Fuji, uh, Nishiki Fuji, and uh, at the very top of Judo, Takara Fuji. So it, it's kind of easy for him to get lost, but it also means he's getting incredible reps from all these different body types every time he goes to practice. Like, just the wealth of size, style, and experience levels just in those five or six wrestlers alone is a huge advantage. 
Now, Take Rufuji looks like primarily a pusher thruster, but he does seem to be pretty comfortable when forced into a belt fight. Again, I think that's part of the large stable advantage. You're constantly being shown different styles of sumo. The other thing about being in a very strong stable is that he will not have to face as tough of a schedule as everyone else. By the end of the year, things might get really cramped up like Maegashira 5 and above. We might have as many as four Isegahama wrestlers up there. What happens over the next two years when we're looking at a, a Sanyaku and a Joy that has Terra no Fuji, possibly Midori Fuji, and then Atami Fuji, and then we're also going to have possibly Hakuoho coming back. Takeru Fuji wouldn't have to face any of those wrestlers in the regular season. And finally, Takeru Fuji seems to have an incredible amount of sumo heart. I know my heart sank on day 14 when they had to get that wheelchair and wheel him out. I thought we were going to have just the most let down day 15 ever, and we were going to have to have someone win a Yu show based on someone else winning or losing, and that's never as fun. But he came back. He went karate kid on our ass, came back, fought Gonoyama, and won the championship outright. And now the list of things I'm a little worried about, about Takeru Fuji. Well, first of all, uh, although he doesn't have a lot of Makauchi experience, he does have a lot of sumo miles and a long injury history. He has had recurring knee injuries, including a torn left ACL, and that's one of those big ones that you really, really need to be careful about for your future. And yes, he's turning 25, which should be right in his sweet spot for his peak, but if we look at the Makauchi Banzuke, we see a bunch of guys who are his age or younger who have already been in the top division for over a year? Like, stablemate, Atami Fuji, Hirado Umi, Kotoshoho Oho, Ozeki Hoshodyu? That's right. Takeru Fuji is a month older than Hoshodyu, who has been in sumo for years. So while him starting late into professional sumo will hinder him a bit, we will see what it does to his ultimate ceiling, as we've mentioned on the show before. Uh, wrestlers tend to peak around 30 or slightly above, so we're looking for Takeru Fuji to have 30 to 35 basho to show us his absolute best sumo. Whereas look at Atami Fuji, he might have 50 or more amazing basho before we can consider him past his prime. <laughs> Ooh, Kasanyaku. <laughs> Didn't drop this one yet, so I'm gonna drop it now. Okay, what was wrong? Yes, I was wrong about a lot of stuff in this tournament. I mean, no one expected Takeru Fuji, but I also expected the Sanyaku and the Ozekis particularly to do very well this tournament. And it didn't quite happen. Takakesho did clear Kataban, which I did not expect, but then he did go Kyujo, which I did expect. I expected all the other Ozeki to clear 10 wins pretty easily. Uh, Kirishima finished with a 5 and 10. Oh, we'll talk a bit about him in a second, but ooh, not good. The other two Ozeki did pretty darn well. Koto Nawaka, who has just announced he will be changing his name to his grandfather's Shikona, Koto Zakata, starting next tournament, so let's all get our minds around that. But the current Koto Nawaka had an excellent debut. Sometimes you get that Ozeki curse. 10 and 5, great way to start. I expect more and better things from Koto Nawaka, Koto Zakara, in the future. Now Hoshodyu, oh, Hoshodyu came so close in this tournament. Now, of course, he got hurt in the last tournament right at the end. No one was really sure how he was going to do in this tournament. He did great. Uh, the problem I keep running into with Hoshodyu is that he keeps giving away like two or three matches that he really needs to win every single Basho to Maegashira. Happened again. Had three Maegashira losses in this tournament. Three out of his four. So if he could just tighten that up and stop losing to guys like Midori Fuji or Tobizaru. Now both those guys are amazing wrestlers, but if you want to be considered like a championship contender every time, you can't be losing to those guys. But that said, he's still 24, he'll be turning 25 during the May tournament, and he's coming off of three consecutive 10 or more win tournaments. I see the future as very bright for Hoshodu for the rest of the year. Uh, doing much better than I expected. Komasubi Abi finished with a 9 and 6. Great job. He looked very focused. He looked super strong. He'll be moving up to Sekiwake next tournament with Wakamoto Haru, who also got a 9 and 6 to stay at Sekiwake. Wakamoto Haru bounced back very, very strong. I expect Wakamoto Haru to stay up in the Sanyaku for a bit. Bounced right back from the Magashi ranks after last tournament. Did great. Keep getting those 9 and 6s, buddy. Sekiwaki Daesho and Komasubi Nishikigi will be returning to the Maegashira ranks after getting losing records. Daesho got a 6 and 9, which of course is what Wakamoto Hara got a couple tournaments ago. I expect Daesho to, to, to he's not done. He, he, he's got a few more tournaments. I expect him to fully stay in the Sanyaku Joy conversation for the rest of the year. 
Mishkigi, ah, he's one of those guys who I feel belongs in mid-Maigashira, but every now and then he just has a real good tournament in mid-Maigashira, and then everyone above him sort of craps the bed, and then he gets bumped up to Sanyago, and then he gets punched back down. Uh, I love the guy. I love the fact that, you know, he's getting more money off of this. Uh, he's getting a little bit of respect, but I, I just don't see him as a top 15 wrestler. It looks like our new Komasubi are going to be Maigashira 1, Asanoyama, and Maigashira 5, Ono Santo. Now, Asanoyama made it through the entire tournament without going Kyujo, which has not happened in a bit. So good for him getting back up to the Sanyaku. And Maigashira 5, Ono Sato. Okay, we're going to pre add a boy Ono Sato this time. He ended up getting a Jun Yusho in his second Makauchi tournament, ended up getting two out of the three special prizes, didn't get outstanding performance. And as I said before, I wasn't sure about Ono Sato till he beat his first member of the Sanyaku. Well, he went four and two against the Sanyaku in this tournament. All right, I'm ready to say it. Onosato is a Joy Sanyaku level wrestler. I've got him in my top 15 going forward for a good long time. pre boy. Now, my is one through three are going to be a bit of an issue because I have like seven or eight wrestlers who deserve to be there and there are only six spots. So somewhere in the group of Daesho, Atami Fuji, who ended up getting eight wins, Takeyasu, who got 11 wins at Maigashira 8, Gonoyama, who got 10 wins at Maigashira 6, Hira Doumi, who got 9 wins at Maigashira 4, and possibly Tobizaru and Takeru Fuji being able to bump back into that. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a mess, but I think the joy is going to be stacked in the next tournament. And now, it's time for Uncle Sumo's Attaboys. <laughs> Of course, Uncle Sumo's Attaboys, where we talk about the wrestlers who maybe didn't get all the press, but deserve a nice little Attaboy for a great tournament. And we've already pre-Attaboyed Onosato, who got quite a bit of press already, so we're good on that. Want to give an Attaboy to Gonoyama. Now, yes, uh, he got bumped out of the joy after the last tournament, and yes, he got two Fusen wins, but he looked very strong down the stretch in this tournament. They promoted him down the stretch, and even though he didn't win a lot of those matches, he looked very good in those matches. So, uh, I'm not putting Gonoyama in the Onosato Take Rufuji category yet, but he's definitely going to be mid Maigashira for a good long time. Maigashira 8, Takeyasu. The former Ozeki got an 11 and 4, earning him his 8th Jun Yusho without a Yusho. Now, I love the guy, I love his sumo heart, but the body seems to be failing him a little bit much. It seems like we're just gonna go back into the cycle where he works his way back up to the Sanyaku and gets hurt again. I'm always hoping out for like a year of solid health for Takeyasu and hope that maybe he can just grab that Yusho. Maigashira 4, Hiro do Umi. All right, uh, I was completely wrong about this. I really thought Hiro do Umi's ceiling was going to be a bit lower than this, but Maigashira 4, his all-time high rank. He was facing Sanyaku members 9 and 6, so there may be another level of growth for Hiro do Umi yet. And I don't usually give attaboys for 8 and 7s, but Atami Fuji at Maigashira 2. He got his first Kachikoshi up in the joy. Things are looking great for him. And also, he's an Isagahama guy, so possibly by the end of the year, most of the Sanyaku will be in his stable, and he won't have to face them. Now we come to the recurring segment, Worried, where we talk about wrestlers who did not have a great tournament, and I decide whether or not I am worried about their future prospects. First up, Maigashira 9, Hokuto Fuji. Ugh. I love Hokuto Fuji. I love his, like, madman energy. I love his, like, seven-minute meatloaf song of a warm-up. I, I love everything about him, but we cannot overlook the fact that he's coming off a Kyujo from the last tournament. This tournament was his third straight Makekoshi. Now, Hokuto Fuji is a guy I I've always seen as more of a, like, a low-joy, occasional Sanyaku guy, but here he is down right at Maigashira 9 getting losing records. Ugh, it's not good. Now, he's only 31, but he does have a very, like, high strength chaotic level of sumo, so here's hoping this is just a temporary setback and he comes back strong, but I'd be lying if I said I was not worried. Maigashira 1, Asanoyama. Yes, I am worried about someone who just got a 9 and 6 and will be making the Sanyaku next tournament. <sighs> well, I, it's not so much that I'm worried about Asanoyama, it's that I'm pretty sure we have now seen the best of Asanoyama. I'm like, oh, but once he gets healthy and goes all 15 days, we're going to see what's up, and... What's up is he's 9 and 6. Okay. Uh, I could see him making up to Sekiwake again, but I just don't see him being anywhere near where he was at his Ozeki peak. Now, I love Asanoyama, but I think he has had a tendency to be a bit overrated. Remember, he won his Yusho back from the Maigashira ranks. His best tournament in Makauchi has been a 12 and 3. So at his best, years ago, he was a 12 win Rikishi in a pretty weak Bonsake. Now, he's 30, the Bonsake is much stronger, and there are a bunch of young guys who are gunning for his spot. So I don't think he's been lapped by the field, but he's definitely, like, they're catching up on him very, very quick. And I don't really see another Yusho run for Asanoyama. I sort of see him sort of aging into, like, a the, the new 
Takeyasu, as it were. Sort of a, a mid-level boss for the young guys, but I don't really see him contending down the stretch anymore. I am not worried, and I may eat these words later, but I'm not worried about Ozeki Kirishima. Uh, you never know when there's a moment of extreme upheaval in a wrestler's life, if this is going to be a thing that motivates them or if this is a thing that tears them down inside. Perhaps leaving his Oyakata for his retirement was putting too much pressure on him. Perhaps he was hurt and we just don't know about it. Perhaps he was sick and no one tells us anything. This is one of the problems with sumo. They are very tight-lipped about their weaknesses until after the tournament. But I expect getting back with the former Kakudu will help him out a lot. He'll get his head on right, double digit wins next tournament. Come on! Now it's time to see who's taking that midnight train to Judeo. The Judeo promotion to motion picture seems pretty clear this time, but there may be a little bit of wiggle room towards the end of the list. Check this out. I have three wrestlers who are definitely going down. Starting with Maigashira 12, Shimazu Umi, finished with zero wins and went Kyujo. He's, he's going down. Maigashira 14, Kitanowaka, three wins. He's also going down. And Endo at Maigashira 16, five wins. So all three of those guys are going to be heading down for sure. Now this matches up very well with Judo, where we have three guys who I think are definitely going to get promoted. Judio 2, Mitoriu, got 12 wins and the Yusho, he's coming up. Judio 1 East, right there in the catbird seat, Tokuheate got 8 wins, he's coming up. And Judio 4, Oshoma, he got 11 wins, he broke out of the 7-8 win cycle, and he'll be coming on up. And that takes us to the maybes. Now the issue I have is we have, I think, 3 maybe demotions and 2 maybe promotions. So... By my math, Maigashira 15, Miyogi Ryu with six wins. Maigashira 6, Tsurugisho only got two wins. Of course, that bad knee injury, which I have been told he should be back by the next tournament, but I'm not that optimistic. And Maigashira 16, Daimami with seven. Now those, now these are all real close. I have them right at the Maigashira 17 line, but there's only one Maigashira 17, and they can't all be Maigashira 17. So could either of these two guys bump them out? Judio 3, Tomakaze with nine wins, or Judio 1, and channel favorite, Takara Fuji with eight. Now mathematically, I think there's gonna be a big crunch right down at the Judeo 1 Maigashira 17 line. And as much as I love Takara Fuji, I'm gonna go with a conservative estimate and say we're gonna go three up, three down this time. So if I were like, uh, if, if I were a showrunner, uh, like for a TV show, and uh, the writers had brought me the plot for this Basho, I would have had notes. I would have been like, oh no, no, we, we, we've already set up all of the storylines we need. We, we've got plenty. We've got, we got Kirishima. Uh, it, his, his Oyakata is retiring. We have Hoshodu in the ongoing uncle drama, so we don't know what's going on with that. We have Kotonowaka trying to win for his dad and his grandfather before changing his name. We had enough storylines, people. And now, now we got all these new characters. We're just introducing them willy-nilly. We have this Ono Sato guy. Who's he? We don't know anything about him yet. And all of a sudden, this Takeru Fuji guy comes out of nowhere to wins. People. Pacing. This looks like it's going to be an everything, everywhere, all at once type of year. And we're just gonna be getting a lot of stuff happening all at once. And hey, I'm here for it. We can have uh, injured Yokozuna drama. We have four Ozeki who are under 28. We have a buttload of young guys who are just charging up through the system. It seems at will at this point. I have no idea what's going to happen in May, but I do think the Dojo needs to revisit some of our sort of settled sumo lore. First of all, we've said many times on this channel that all of our recent Ozeki, except Asano Yama, did not make Ozeki until a year after their son Yaku debut. I have a feeling with the guys coming through right now, that may get broken pretty soon. And also I think I need to start reevaluating uh, the, the possible peak and ceiling of university wrestlers. Now, as a lot of you know, uh, we do not tend to have a lot of university wrestlers make it all the way to Yokozuna. I think the only one we've ever had is Wajima. Now, the primary disadvantage to being a university wrestler is that you are starting your professional career in your early to mid-twenties as opposed to in your mid to late teens. And that is just time you won't get with your Oyakata in a stable, learning the sumo life. When you go to college, you're going to have a whole different set of coaches. You're going to have possibly a different sort of sumo style you're being pushed into, depending on where you go. But our recent Makauchi debutants, Ono Sato and Take Rufuji, seem to be turning this on its ear. What about University Sumo has changed in the past few years, or are these guys just generational level talents who have hit the Bonsuke at the exact same time? Thank you so much for joining us here on the Dojo. If you have not already, please like and subscribe. That just tells the entire YouTube algorithm we love the Dojo and we want everyone to see it, right? 
Stay tuned to the channel, and thank you to everyone who answered my Hagakiyoi community post. We're going to start picking through those and filming that in a little bit. And of course, uh, all the preparations for May, you're not going to want to miss any of that, because that is going to be an insane basho. So everyone, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Doyo. Yeah.